So, we need a new flex plate. This is our old flex plate, and it kind of broke a little bit around this area. Every single one of these welds around the edges completely snapped off. I don't know if that has anything to do with this flex plate not having enough strength to handle the torque of our 383 stroker, or it had something to do with us installing it wrong, doesn't matter. Today, we have a new flex plate to install, which means we also have to shim it correctly. Shimming the flex plate is super important to the transmission and the pump, specifically the pump rotor. If when you install the torque converter, it is too far or too close to the flex plate, you can do damage to the pump on the inside, like we did when we shattered our pump rotor, which you can watch a video about over here. So when you're installing the transmission and torque converter, and before you bolt it to the flex plate, you need to make sure that the gap between the flex plate and the torque converter is between 3 sixteenths of an inch and 1 eighth of an inch. To make sure our torque converter is spaced correctly inside the transmission, we need to measure this gap before we put our bolts on. So we can use a dial caliper and stick it through the hole and measure the distance from the flex plate to the torque converter. To get this gap to the correct tolerances, you might need to shim the flex plate in a couple of different ways. The way we shimmed our flex plate last time is that we used washers between the flex plate and the torque converter. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but we're going to take a different approach this time and shim it from the crank to the flex plate. So by shimming the crank first with something like this, both of these are two different kits containing two different sets of shims. Um, this set is three of the same size shims at 90 thousandths of an inch, and this one is an assortment. In the last video, when we installed the washer shims, we ended up needing something like 153 thousandths to 214 thousandths of an inch shims, and we ended up getting pretty right down the middle of that with a set of washers. Um, so for this, we're gonna use two of the 90 thousandths of an inch, which should give us 180 thousandths, which should also be pretty close to the middle. The fact that we approximately know our measurements beforehand is gonna save us a lot of effort because the only way to measure the distance is going to be with the transmission and the bell housing installed on the car and then measuring that gap. And if it isn't right, then you need to pull the transmission back off, pull the flex plate off, re-shim it, and hopefully get it right the second time by doing the math correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and install these two 90 thousandths shims and then install our flex plate. And then we're gonna install our transmission and see if we shimmed it correctly and measure it all later. So I mentioned earlier that these shims are both 90 thousandths of an inch. Um, they did say that on the listing. I'm gonna go ahead and just verify that just to be super safe. Obviously I don't wanna put one in that's not 90 thousandths of an inch. Uh, so this one is about 89 thousandths of an inch, that's probably close enough. And then this one is uh, also about 89 thousandths of an inch. So perfect, that's, we're, that's still well within our tolerance that we need. That only brings us down two thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and install both of these onto the crank. All right, so this shim does not line up at all with this crank. That might just be because this is not the crank that came with the engine. It is a stroker crank to make our 350 a 383. But I did buy two packs of shims, so I'm gonna go grab the other pack and see if those fit. Hopefully they do, or else we have to wait a few days for the next ones to get shipped in. All right, so let's see if this, so let's see if this other pack of shims lines up a little better. Yes, already immediately, I can see that all these holes actually line up with the crank. These are different thicknesses though, so we just need to measure these out and find what was equivalent to close to 180 thousandths of an inch or so. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the 80 thousandths, 60 thousandths, and 40 thousandths, which gets us exactly to 180 thousandths. All right, so now those are on. We can take off our bolts. And now we can install our flex plate, making sure that the side that says this side must be towards transmission, towards the transmission. So it is recommended that you use red Loctite on the flex plate bolts. And these flex plate bolts also came with some ARP lube. So we're gonna use both of that with a little bit of red Loctite on the tip and then the lube on the shaft. Nice. <laughs> so we're gonna put a little bit red Loctite on these threads, just enough to cover the threads. And then we're gonna put a little bit of the ARP lube onto the threads as well. So now that we have our ARP bolts hand tight, we're gonna use our 12 pointed 19 millimeter socket and torque these down to 60 foot pounds. And I'm gonna alternate randomly as I go through here to make sure that they get applied as evenly as possible. 
And this might be rotating on you, but if you just hold it from here, it can stop from doing that. Now that we have all of these torqued to spec, we're gonna go get our transmission and install it. It is important to note that obviously you have to drop your transmission to shim your flex plate. Um, if you knew you had to shim your flex plate, you probably already have the transmission out and are well aware of how to do that. And if you wanna watch us drop that transmission, you can watch that with the link up in the top right. All right, so we got our transmission bolted up, but as you can see in this hole right here, you can kind of see the top of the bolt hole in this flex plate hole, and it's so close that we can push the, we can rotate the torque converter, but we can't rotate it to line up these holes, which means we're way too close. And unfortunately, I also can't measure it to figure out how many shims we need to remove. So we just need to unbolt this transmission and then take out all or some of the shims and then just try it again. And hopefully we can get it right on the third time. So let's get that unbolted. So we got our transmission bolted up one more time. And now we can freely move the torque converter behind the flex plate. As you can see, this bolt hole, I can move it back and forth. So what we want to measure is the top of this surface on the flex plate to the base of where this threaded hole begins on the torque converter. And then we'll take that measurement and subtract the thickness of the flex plate. And that should give us the play between the flex plate and the torque converter. Um, we measured our flex plate beforehand and we know that it's about uh, 130 thousandths of an inch thick. So we're gonna measure this. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick this end of my dial caliper like this through the hole and then read whatever measurement I get. Making sure that this part is on the surface of the flex plate and this is resting on the surface of the torque converter. So measuring that distance, I get uh, 256 thousandths of an inch. 256 thousandths of an inch minus the 130 thousandths thickness of the flex plate leaves us with 126 thousandths of an inch, which leaves us right in spec, right above 1 8 of an inch. And now we can install our three flex plate to torque converter bolts, and that's all we need to do. So that's it for shimming and installing the flex plate. Of course, there's some more stuff that we need to do, like re-shim our starter, which you can watch here. We have a video on how to shim our starter. Um, if you liked this video, hit like on the video. If you want to watch more of our videos, please hit subscribe. And if you're interested in merch, maybe you might like a cool, very good garage shirt like this one. It has a QR code on the back. Maybe. Well, We'll gauge interest and then maybe put up a shop. We'll see. Anyways, we'll see you next time.